Let's get to the chase here. Everybody knows webcams are horrifying. Video definition is nowhere near good enough to satisfy users, streaming latency is always unbalanced if you don't have an expensive setup, and the potential to see something terrible on Omegle or Chat Roulette is higher than any possibility of reward. Webcams and horror content have gone hand in hand since this technology was made available, with movies, TV episodes, and of course, jump scare pranks all contributing to the correlation. As webcams have stopped being a novelty and become more of an expected staple in laptops and mobile devices, the popularity of livestream-based horror has begun to lose traction. But some of the more gruesome stories involving webcams are still waiting to be told. PAX Prime, also known as PAX West, is an annual video game convention held in Seattle, Washington as part of a series of conventions that take place each year. In 2013, PAX Prime held a very unique booth in the area reserved for independent developers and studios. There was no sign. There was no attendant. There was only a white box monitor covered in blood next to a PC tower placed on garbage bags. Camdrome had no explanation behind it except for what sense viewers could make watching its display. A continuous run of scripting in between logo animations and clips of people recorded from webcams, each of them ending with glitching, suicide, or murder. Several of the clips contain the image of a hooded intruder wearing a doll mask, usually showing up just before someone's death. These clips may have been live feeds according to the preceding text under the logo. Connecting to servers, searching webcams, connecting. Many of the items mentioned in the scripting segment relate to different forms of media, like the old thriller game Night Trap, and even Endgame, a conspiracy theory documentary by Alex Jones about global enslavement and impending genocide orchestrated by a secret society. Early lines in the script execution that weren't media references led viewers to Camdrome.com, a site that, at first glance, only redirected visitors to a Twitter account for Camdrome. Tracing the Twitter activity back to its beginning, we see Camdrome began speaking on July 18th, 2013, and then started communicating in earnest on August 30th, the first day of PAX Prime. The first tweet of the event? A link to an article about a man committing suicide on a live stream. Pictures were sent out immediately after by the account of its own booth, followed by tweets calling to visitors at PAX Prime, telling them they were being watched. This continued up until the third day, when Camdrome apparently left its shell behind. This was confirmed by game designer Chris Morris. PAX is over and everything is broken down, but Camdrome is still here. By this time, word had spread about the off-putting oddity sitting in the indie development booth. Even the creator of Minecraft, Marcus Person, also known as Notch, wanted to know what exactly this was. Camdrome was quite happy to be addressed. The account ended its premiere visit to PAX with a statement on Twitter. Split into 11 pieces. Sent onto 11 executioners. Our problems can't be ignored. The image in the link was a heavily distorted collage of faces, most likely those of the 11 executioners. Interested parties didn't have to wait long to find out what this was about. Media coverage of Camdrome started the same day PAX ended, and the sites that reported on its appearance were then directly solicited by Camdrome. Emails were sent to the writers of press articles from 11 at camdrome.com. We are not going to achieve a new world order without paying for it in blood as well as in words and money. Our problems can't be ignored. We are the problem. I am the answer. We are in this together. I am humanity. The numbers and letters below are a message in hex code. It's a link to the Encyclopedia Dramatica article for an hero, which is a code word for someone who committed suicide. Different recipients of Camdrome's emails were told they were part of a group of 11 and had to absolve themselves of guilt by breathing life into Camdrome. The emails also contained either a high-resolution version of one of the clips from the monitor at PAX Prime, or an image that seemed to be part of a larger hull. Some recipients even were lucky enough to receive both forms of gift. It became clear very soon that the images were definitely meant to fit together, but to this day, the full image hasn't been formed from its pieces. We do know what it's meant to be, however. By digging into the HTML of the website and then into the style sheet, we can find a very large string of text. This is actually an image that's been translated into Base64 coding, and reversing the process through a decoder gives us a blurry version of a poster for Camdrome, a guide to lay the 11 pieces over. It's easy enough to see the image from the parts that have been collected, our hooded intruder in the doll mask, in the center of what appears to be a ring of victims. A few of these faces can be seen in the clips played on the monitor at PAX. The poster was buried a little better than most of the secrets you can find in website source codes related to alternate reality games, but surface level exploring in the HTML still reveals a good amount of surprises. 
Immediately, you'll be met with an ASCII text image of the hooded killer, and using the find function for the letter M helps you see them a lot more clearly. The message in this is pretty obvious. Press M for murderer. Directly below that is a much more straightforward message. Meat is meat. Diving back into the style sheet, you can also catch this as the name for the background image, meatismeat.jpg. Going directly to the page that stores the image confirms the title. Below the rule set for the background image, you'll also spot an area titled 11. It's starting to look like Camdrome has a favorite number. 11 shows up again for our next hidden message. Under the metadata for the site, a meta name is listed as 11 with content being a single sentence. You're doing this to yourself. And again, right around the information for the Twitter logo, two division boxes marked by the number 11, one with a message reading, Feel the knife pull the wire around your neck. Now I'm watching you. Back on Twitter, players in the game to discover the secrets behind Camdrome could find a common thread in what this being, system, or hooded psychopath was after. On September 1st, during PAX, the account tweeted out a link to an article about a man who witnessed his girlfriend being murdered during a webcam call. The next day, Camdrome brought up a new segment about Jesse Slaughter, a victim of cyberbullying and target of a push by online harassers to be pressured into suicide. On September 12th, Camdrome delivered a message in Base64 code that was also encoded using hex code language. Another news article with the same kind of theme, girl committed suicide after cyberbullying. A few good clues come next from interaction with other users on Twitter during PAX. In response to a visitor who just mentioned being at PAX and feeling like they needed a midday shower, Camdrome said, I've made a mess. I could do with a midday shower myself. Now we know how all that blood got on the monitor. One way or another, Camdrome was responsible for the mess. A user initiates a conversation merely by calling Camdrome's name using Twitter's at sign protocol. The response by Camdrome is very welcoming. They've been waiting for this user to call them. The user, however, doesn't feel like being the object of entertainment, opting to give an instruction to Camdrome to say, garbage can. Camdrome says it will do everything the user desires, as long as they give it what it wants. What do you want? The user asks. More, Camdrome answers. Another user chimes in, saying, I really doubt your magic stuff can work on Linux. The response? Violence knows no boundaries. Finally, a paranoid question. Are you going to eat my eyes in my sleep? Camdrome says it wouldn't mind seeing them consumed. Another joke response while the same user comes next. I love it when you talk dirty. Camdrome says it just wants the user to be a part of them. These are really all the clues we need to get a basic understanding of what this thing wants. From the hints about death recorded straight to the internet, the blood on the monitor it was responsible for, the pursuit of violence, and an appetite for more, it's clear that Camdrome is fueled by bloodshed. Live sacrifices. Recorded violence on webcams and murder fueled by internet harassment. If the web is taking part in someone's violent death, Camdrome is there, feeding off of the event. Things go slightly quiet after PAX Prime until October when a very different kind of message pops up. Only patient eyes will see, Novus Ordo Seclorum. That mysterious phrase is a Latin term meaning, New Order of the Ages. This falls in line with the email messages talking about a new world order paid for in blood. The following year did not see a return by Camdrome to the PAX convention. At least, not in any obvious form. A follower on the first day asked why Camdrome wasn't there, to which they replied, I am everywhere. But when will we see you, the user asked. Camdrome replied, when you open your eyes and call my name. Later that day, Camdrome asked, have you found me yet? Activity on Twitter ceased after this until May 26 of last year, with a new representation of our hooded character. I'm still here. Are you? It's so easy to watch. Together, it's easier to make something better to watch. So many of my children are misbehaving. They need to be punished. They will be. Once again, Camdrome kept followers in the dark about whether or not it really was at PAX for the 2015 convention. Final communication from Camdrome occurred on September 21st, which means it hasn't been too long since the account's been active. Whatever's going on here, it's not over. And what really is going on here? We actually have a rough idea of what Camdrome is about, we know where it's been, and we've seen messages from the system. But is there any ground for legitimate explanation? Actually, yes, there is some room to pin down what this internet horror is trying to achieve. 
One of the original media outlets to report on Camdrome did some digging that shed light on the mystery. 4Player Network, which opened its report the day after PAX Prime's closing, investigated the domain registration for the Camdrome website. The search gave up immediate results for Edmund McMillan, the co-creator of Super Meat Boy, and The Binding of Isaac. A deeper search using combined phrases of Camdrome and Team Meat, the development studio McMillan is a part of, brought up a PDF document from Backseat Conceptions, a multimedia production company. The initial Google search sample that shows up with all search results had a quote from the document about Camdrome, listing it as a Harper video game to be released this fall by Team Meat, the creators of Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac. Unfortunately, following the link only brought 4Player Network to a dead page. Somebody pulled the revealing info before PAX was over. Another site covering the mystery, Eurogamer, picked up the trail from there by contacting Edmund McMillan directly. His reply was surprising. We really aren't involved in making Camdrome. But Tommy Refinez, Edmund's co-creator on Super Meat Boy, helped set up the booth there. We know the developer who is making it and have been helping. We believe in the concept but don't actually know that much about the project other than its initial incarnation and the booth setup. We are as in the dark as everyone else on the current ARG. And there we have it. Edmund McMillan and Tommy Refinez know a decent amount of what this is, but not even they can give a full answer. The only piece left to this whole mystery is one last video clip on YouTube. Unlike the source material clips uploaded as unlisted videos with links to them emailed to Clue recipients in the press, this one is fully public and is something we haven't seen yet. A very glitchy run of corrupted footage recording our doll mask wearing character. It very much appears to be a collage of different clips. Our killer has been recorded in many locations. So what do we know about Camdrome? Clearly, it's an independent game that has to do with something truly evil lurking in the internet, and it's got a major thirst for blood. It involves webcams, murder, and has an overall 80s horror classic look that I can't help but love. Whoever made the image for Camdrome was really channeling Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street for its creation, and they totally nailed it. I expect that feeling will carry on into the launch of the game itself. Whatever the game is actually going to be. Because really, that's the most mysterious part of this entire event. We know it's a game, and it's a game that's good enough to appeal to any development A-listers like the guys behind Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac. But as for what the game is, how it's going to work, what role you'll play, what the story is, what you have to do, I honestly can't even imagine how this is all going to play out. The possibilities for what Camdrome can be with the kind of premise it's presenting are pretty far and wide. Maybe, like the initial PAX display itself, this is going to be something nobody was expecting we've really never seen before. Maybe it's going to be a half digital game you download as part of modern tradition and half alternate reality game like it's been shaping up as. This was a tough call to make when it came to classifying Camdrome as part of our dark arcade studies or as a case file. We know a decent amount about what this is and what it will be. It's going to be a game. But at the same time, there's so much we don't know and still don't have fundamental answers to. Despite my classification difficulties, one thing I can't say is that I'm not intrigued. I want to keep in lockstep with Camdrome the entire run and be there on day one whenever something major happens. I have never seen such ingenuity, creativity, and overall impressive independent spirit as I have from discovering this. I'm very excited about Camdrome and can only imagine the ride we may be in for. In fact, while reading through the communications on Twitter from the Camdrome account to those it responded to, it seemed an instruction guide for interacting with the system was starting to form. Camdrome wants to be called. It wants to be noticed. Those who have successfully called Camdrome have done so using its name in the form of a question. If we want to see Camdrome, we have to open our eyes and call its name. During PAX 2014 it said, why won't you play with me a little? And when asked how to begin, Camdrome replied, call my name. Are you guys willing to poke the bear and awaken the beast? I certainly am. Immediately before rendering out this video and uploading to YouTube, I followed the instructions the best I could, changing my profile picture to open all four of my eyes and then calling on Camdrome in the form of a question. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm certainly keeping watch. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and we'll see if Camdrome says anything together. I've covered a fair amount of things, but haven't had an opportunity for direct interaction like this. Let's try and turn the system on, everybody. That's it for now. There's really nothing more to do until activity stirs from our friend the Bloody Eyeball and its doll face partner. If you've enjoyed this trip to the not-so-distant past in search of unlocked webcams and source code secrets, hit the like button and tell me what you think in the comments below. 
Be sure to subscribe as well to catch more videos on topics like Camdrome. Internet mysteries and dark media are always covered on Nightmind, and I'll keep on delivering content to keep you up at night. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like a sinister system who just keeps coming back for more, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.